Yorkie, how much does it actually cost to sell your home? I don't know. Well, I do. So let's do this. Hello, my name is Rebecca Valera. I'm a former teacher turned realtor here in the Dallas area. So in today's video, I'm gonna break this down into two sections. First, we're gonna talk about upfront costs. So costs that you're gonna to have to front the money for upfront. And second, we're gonna talk about overall closing costs and what you can expect there. So on the front end of everything, the biggest cost that you're gonna probably incur is the cost of deferred maintenance. So that would be things that you were gonna fix, but you haven't had either A, the money to fix or the time to fix. So now is gonna be the time to fix everything before you put your house on the market. And whatever this is, it's not simple. It's gonna be more cost effective for you to do it this way versus having the buyers ask you to do these repairs later. And it's gonna be more costly for you. So things like the foundation, the roof, the HVAC, they all need to be looked at. So if you haven't had your HVAC service in a while, I would highly recommend doing that. If your roof is in great shape and you've had it replaced within the last couple of years, then you should be okay. Now, if you know that there's some damage or you know you had a hailstorm and you just didn't get the money from the insurance for whatever reason, it might be worth investigating and looking at on the front end versus the back. Now, the other thing is about the foundation. There are two types of homes here in Texas, ones that have foundation issues and ones that are about to have foundation issues. It's just the nature of the beast. Frank? Don't mock me. In the nature of Texas soils and the temperature and the area. So um, here's a couple of things that you wanna do in regards to foundation. If there are any cracking or any doors that aren't shutting right and you haven't had any foundation issues in the past, then I would highly recommend hiring an engineer and having them come out and take a look at the property. They will charge you for this, and I've seen it run anywhere from $350 all the way up to $500. So it really just depends on who you hire and the engineer in that case. Once you get the report back, it should tell you if you need work done. Also, if you happen to have an older home, it may have some electrical things that will come up on the inspection. So if you've had your electrical panel and things recently looked at, then you should be okay. If it still has the two prong holes on most of the exterior walls for your electrical outlets, that might be an issue that comes up. I'm not saying that it will, I'm saying that it might come up and might cost you more later. So it's better to take a look at that now versus waiting to do it later. All right, so the second thing as far as upfront costs go, now this is a completely optional thing for you to do, but, um, and you can put a little sweat equity in if you'd like, but cleaning is so important when it comes to presenting your home for buyers to see. So if it's been a while since your last deep clean, or if you wanna put some sweat equity in and you wanna deep clean it yourself, by all means, go for it but I would recommend either having a cleaning service come out and do the deep clean for you, or you make sure that you get that done before it hits the market. The third thing that I wanna talk with you guys a little bit about is uh, staging. So if it's a vacant home, especially a larger home, you might consider getting a little bit of staging done in your living room or master bedroom to give people more of a better feel and understanding of where furniture would go or how the furniture would look like. There are different staging options and packages, so please talk to your realtor about all of those because that's something that can really add a lot of value to your house. Yeah, well, I've heard that before. The fourth thing that you could do up front would be to actually hire an inspector to come in and take a look at all of your systems so that way you know before your home hits the market what is wrong with the house. All right, so a word of caution here when it comes to hiring an inspector before you put your house on the market. So a couple of things could happen. Either A, it could scare away a whole bunch of potential buyers thinking there's all of these issues and all of these problems with your house because by the way, you have to disclose that inspection and all of the things that are listed on that report have to be on the seller's disclosure as well. So 
Those have to line up and match up unless you're thinking about doing all of those repairs. The other thing to consider when hiring an inspector first before waiting on the buyer to hire the inspector, the buyer's not gonna ask for everything on the inspection report. So taking care of major things beforehand will help more than getting a big long list of items because you know the buyer is not gonna ask for all of those things to be fixed on the inspection report. So waiting might actually be an advantage in this case when it comes to an inspection. My dear Lord. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about what you can expect to see on your closing cost. So assuming that you're gonna hire an amazing real estate agent, the first thing that you're gonna to have to consider is the commission. The cost of the commission is going to be uh, paid to the agents at closing. So you're not gonna to have to front any of the cost or any of the expenses that the real estate agent is fronting for you. So for example, the real estate agent is gonna pay for the professional photos that you see online, they're gonna pay their MLS dues so that you get your property marketed on the MLS. They're gonna be paying a, a certain percentage to their broker. There are just tons of expenses that the real estate agent is going to have to cover for you in lieu of what you're paying them. And this is all, mind you, before taxes are even taken out. So contrary to popular belief, real estate agents are not millionaires. What you've just said, is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. All right, the second expense that I'm gonna talk a little bit about is the property taxes that are gonna be prorated. So if you've already paid your property taxes, you actually get money back from the day of closing to the end of the year. But if you haven't paid your property tax yet, you're gonna be responsible for the property taxes from January 1 all the way until the day of closing. And then the buyer is gonna take on the other part of the taxes. So you'll see those taxes as a part of your closing costs. All right, so the third thing uh, that you could expect to see as a part of your closing costs is the home warranty. Now this is up for negotiation whenever you first enter into a contract with a buyer. So I've seen this range anywhere from $400 all the way up to $600 with the most common be about $500. So I would go ahead and estimate that in unless you're in a very strong seller's market and then the buyers might say, hey, we don't want you to pay for that. We'll either take care of it or will just not get a home warranty. So those are all options, but in general, the seller is going to pay for the buyer's home warranty. Now, depending also on what type of market we're in, you may see the buyer ask you to pay for some, all, or part of their closing cost. Now, this is more popular with first time home buyers who just don't have $10,000 extra to put towards some of their closing costs or even a down payment. But that's insane. Or if we're in a very strong buyer's market to where the buyers have more negotiation power, they're gonna ask the seller to front some of those costs as well. So anticipate that if you're in a buyer's market or if your buyer is a first time home buyer. The other thing that I like to tell sellers about is repair. So this is going to be a big range of numbers. It could range from zero all the way up to however much it costs. But usually what I tell sellers, a good rule of thumb is just to set aside about $1,000 because nobody's house is perfect unless you have new construction, you did your inspection beforehand, and you have fixed every little last thing, and the buyer is just not gonna ask for anything. Or if you're in a very strong seller's market, and you have a little bit more negotiation power at that point, but most of the time, we're just trying to find a balance between what is right to do for the seller and what is right to do for the buyer, and kind of come to a middle ground but I would budget at least $1,000. You may spend more, you may spend less, but that's just a good rule of thumb. Probably one of the bigger expenses that you're gonna be thinking about is the mortgage payoff. If you've been in your home for a long time, that number is gonna be really small, or it could be zero, which is amazing. Now, if you've just lived in your house for a year or two, it may not make sense to sell your house right away unless you absolutely have to because your payoff amount is gonna be really huge. So things to think about. But All right, next we're gonna talk a little bit about taxes. And I'm not talking about property taxes. We've already talked about that. 
I'm talking about capital gains tax. As certain as death and taxes. So capital gains tax is applied to you if you make more than $250,000 profit on the sale of your home. Now, if you're a single person, that limit is 250. If you are married, that number doubles to $500,000 of what you would profit, okay? So if, you, if you're making more than $250,000 on the sale of your home, then I would definitely recommend talking to your accountant about this. All right, next up we have title fees. So escrow fees or document preps and so on, any other miscellaneous fee that the title company is going to charge you. So I would set aside at least $1,000 in expenses that you're gonna be paying to the title company specifically for title fees. That's insane. And lastly, you can expect to pay the title policy. Now, this is an, another negotiation point and piece of the contract. In most cases, the seller is going to pay for this. However, if for whatever reason you're in a very strong seller's market and sellers have a greater advantage, then the buyer is possibly gonna cover that cost. This cost is gonna be a percentage of what the home is worth. So uh, the title policy for a $100,000 home is gonna be different than the title policy for a million dollar home. So be sure to ask your title person what you can expect to pay for the title policy, just so you have that for a frame of reference later or for even negotiations. So I'm excited to let you know that I have a free ebook all about how to prepare your home for a successful sale. In the description below, I'm gonna have a link to this free ebook. Check that out if you're interested in that. And if you wanna learn more about real estate here in Texas, or more specifically in Dallas, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you're notified every time a new video comes out. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Look at your pleasure delight. No, no, I don't want to say that. Either A, it could steer. Well, I do. And that's exactly what we're going to. All together.